We are living in a world right now where reality is intentionally being twisted for what appears to be for the better of the people. Tolerance, diversity, acceptance, all of these things are supposed to make us kinder, more connected, and more progressive. So instead of telling someone who is overweight that they're obese, we'll tell them that they're perfect, that they don't need to change a thing and they should keep living the way they're living. And it feels really nice for both people involved in that situation. Instead of telling a child who comes last in a race that they're a loser, we give them a participation trophy and it feels really nice for both people in that situation. And it is so easy to claim that we're doing these things out of kindness, but that's the easy way out because the reality is we do these things because it makes us feel good. It makes us feel good to make others feel good. But that isn't the way that we help people. The fat person is at risk for cardiovascular disease and a bunch of other health issues. And we should probably be encouraging sensible eating habits, some exercise, and perhaps giving them some tough love. And the kid with the collection of participation medals is not gonna go on to win Olympic races. His confidence is not an asset because it's not grounded in accomplishments. No, what's gonna end up happening to this kid is he's gonna become entitled, resentful, and angry, and all of those years of praise and adoration from people, and then no one cares suddenly. It's, it causes for a lifetime of overinflated self-worth, and then he has to come up against a hard reality, and it's not gonna be a soft landing for him. So here's the thing. We cannot better ourselves without being honest and others cannot address their problems unless they know what those problems are. And this brings me now to the topic that I want to discuss. Girls. Young girls are having their futures sacrificed at the altar of political correctness. Women right now can do no wrong and praising us has become a way to virtue signal. We hear it all the time. Follow your heart, women, they say. Do what feels right. Who cares what men think? Don't judge, you be a slut. Live your life, be liberated. We hear this constantly, constantly said to us by everyone, by the media, by popular magazines, by our politicians, our schooling, it's everywhere. But little do women know, like the story of the child with the trophies and the fat person with the potential cardiovascular disease, there is also a cold, harsh, true reality at the end of this rainbow we're being sold. So instead of just telling you the nice things, I'm here to tell you the truth. Because women deserve to hear it and decide for themselves what kind of life they want to live. And I mean the full truth, not the Sex in the City, Cosmo Magazine, mainstream media, Marxist propaganda truth, but the reality. So let's jump into it. Girls, first I wanna start with a compliment and a genuine one. You are extremely valuable and beautiful to a lot of people. Now, if I just finished the sentence there, that would be a truth that not a lot of people would be afraid to tell you. In fact, you've probably heard it time and time again. But what people are afraid to do is to finish that sentence. You are extremely valuable, but that value diminishes over time. And I don't mean the value of your soul or the kind deeds that you do, which can potentially be beautiful forever, but I mean your sexual market value and your desirability as a potential partner and wife. And you can go ahead and blow that off as something that you don't care about. You don't care about sexual market value or what men think of you. But the reality is that it is one of the most important assets of our lives as females. A stable marriage and children are statistically one of the highest predictors of happiness in a woman's life. And your chances of having either of those things diminish over time as you push them back for partying, for work, for education, or for finding yourself, whatever it may be. Good men tend to get married off fast and they marry young women. As men grow older, they earn more money and become more stable and become more valuable on the dating market. And these men are going to be attracted to younger women. This attraction is completely rational. It's not bigoted or because of a hatred of older women. It's just a fact that younger women can have more healthier children. They are less of a divorce risk. They come with less emotional baggage and men with younger wives even live longer. Women love strength and resources. Men value youth and fertility. These are age old archetypes of warriors and mothers. And pairing the masculine with the feminine like this has secured our existence since the beginning of time. Obviously it gets a bit more complicated than that, but the biggest thing you want to know as a woman is that you really do not want to be competing against 20 year old girls for 30 year old guys when you hit the age of 30 because 
you won't win. And it will just become harder and harder and harder for you to find a guy to settle down with as all of the good men who want to settle down and get married do just that, but with younger women. And I'm not just making this stuff up. If you want to dig into the research regarding this, I've put all of the sources in the description. Here's what it comes down to. Men are born poor and grow rich and women are born rich and die poor. As the left is so fond of saying, privilege is invisible to those who have it. And since women are born into wealth, they don't understand what it is like to be poor and they do not appreciate the gifts they have until they're taken from them. Not taking things for granted is really hard when it's something that has always been that way. Have you ever seen or heard of stories where someone will win the lottery and instead of helping their life, it absolutely destroys it. They spend the money too quickly and foolishly and end up in a pit of loneliness, alcoholism, and an empty wallet. Unfortunately, that is not a rare story. And for girls who are born rich and spend their wealth too quickly, it's even worse. A man's wealth is measured in accomplishments, strength, and resources, and men are born ignorant, weak, and destitute. A woman's wealth is measured in youth, fertility, and chastity, and women are born young, fertile, and chaste. A man can accumulate wealth and power over time, but a woman cannot become younger or more chaste. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, whoa, Lauren, I came here for the honest truth, not some freaky, preachy, religious lesson about virginity. Well, the truth is that sometimes suggestions that are made by religion and tradition are backed up by research as being good decisions, and this just happens to be one of them. There are heaps of studies done on the topic of women in promiscuity, and the results are damning. Obviously, there are givens, the increased chances of STDs, potential pregnancy, and single motherhood, which is basically a death sentence when it comes to trying to form new successful relationships in the dating market. But even if you ladies play it super safe, you've got the birth control, the condoms going, and all of that, despite popular belief in what Cosmo magazine will tell you, sex has serious psychological impacts on women that will change your relationships forever. Statistically, every man and woman sleeps with past one adds to the increased chances that her marriage will later end in divorce. A woman with just one previous sexual partner is an equivalent divorce risk to a man with 19. Promiscuity has devastating impacts on women's ability to pair bond and form lasting stable relationships that she needs for her happiness. And this isn't a fact that I like. It's not a fact that I want to be true. I want people to be happy and free to make all of the choices and decisions they want without consequences. But the reality is there are lasting consequences and I can't change that. And women need to understand the consequences of their choices and make informed decisions based on that. And luckily that is already happening. Women are starting to understand that maybe all of this sexual liberation wasn't the brightest idea and that in the long run, a rich family life surrounded by love and children is preferable to being a cat lady. Girls are watching what has happened to the generations before them. They're seeing their older sisters and the people in the grades ahead of them and the celebrities that they used to like go down a path of promiscuity and desoulment and they're watching them become increasingly unhappy. And these aren't isolated anecdotes either. Since the rise of third wave feminism, women's self-reported happiness has been on a measurable decline. So now we're starting to see a trend of young women espousing more traditional conservative values. And that's great in my opinion, because they understand what responsible life decisions they need to make in order to be happier. And they're doing that. Even celebrities are jumping on the bandwagon as they learn from past failures and from friends' experiences. Just take this article from the New York Post, for example. I lost my virginity at 16 to a douchebag in an indoor sports center. It was a cold and unemotional experience. He dumped me the next day. I've had one relationship and more than a handful of hookups since. I have always struggled with intimacy, so after one more disastrous sexual relationship that led nowhere, I decided that I was going to take my time and wait for some form of commitment before I jumped into bed. It's essentially a sex detox to clean the negativity out of my system. Despite her friends saying she's too traditional, Jo says, I'm happier now. Of course, the tragedy here is that a born again virgin isn't a real thing, but it just goes to show that all of these women are beginning to understand just how far they were led astray. And this may seem like a weird, unconventional suggestion of a way to live, but in a world where happiness is dwindling among women, where depression is on the rise and where people are 
searching for meaning at the bottom of a wine glass, why not give it a shot? We plan for our education, we plan for our careers, hell, we even plan our outfits down to a T in the mornings. And we try to make responsible decisions so that we succeed in these areas of our life. So why wouldn't we try to do this in one of the most important areas of our life? The intimate relationships that we have and the families that we form and the grandchildren that we'll have that will fill our golden years with love and joy. Why would we not plan for that? Not only will making more responsible decisions surrounding relationships make women happier, it will create for healthier, happier children and a better world as well. Many of these things that I've stated in this video about uh, sexual market value and relationships may be deemed hate facts and they may be things that we don't want to hear but I personally think it's something that girls need to hear because it's not fair that women are being blinded to the wealth that they have until it's too late. So I really hope that some of you ladies will listen to what I've had to say and maybe practice it in your own life and at least if you, even if you don't you have the knowledge to say that you made an informed decision to go down the liberation path because you're free to do that too. But Overall, I just want you guys to remember that I am not trying to ruin your fun. The people in your life who are making traditional suggestions are not trying to hold you back. They're looking out for you. They want you to be able to have healthy, lifelong relationships. And I know I'm going to get flack for this video. I know I'm going to be called a hateful, bigoted person, but honestly, I don't care because I would rather tell someone the cold, hard truth and watch them have a happy, successful, meaningful life than lie to them to feel good in the moment about myself, to feel like virtue signaled in the moment, because that's selfish. That's extremely selfish that people are lying to women simply to virtue signal their progressivism, because you're ruining people's lives when you do that. I'm looking at you, Cosmo Magazine. I'm looking at you, Modern Sexual Education in Schools. It's, it's not conducive to a good society, and it's not conducive to making women happier. And I just hope that some ladies who listen to this video, at least one, will maybe get something out of this and have a happier future. That's, that's the only goal here. So thank you so much for watching, guys, and I hope you have a wonderful week. I'll see you next time.